Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to another one day tournament. This time it's going to be a two versus two tournament rather than 1v1 tournament we had before. So we have our brackets as we did last time. So we're going to be, first game we're going to watch is Sab and Yurga versus Silencer and Randy. And other games will be going on at the same time. So the players, I believe, are just about ready to get started. And when they are, they are, okay, they're still setting up. So that's just getting started, and when that happens, we'll get to it. Yeah, so another one-day tournament, just like before, except it's 2v2 this time, rather than 1v1. Which is fine, I mean, I have, I think this game works fine for anything up to 3v3. Anything beyond that, I think it becomes ridiculous, but up to 3v3, this game is actually fairly sensible. So 2v2 should be quite interesting. Admittedly, 2v2 is also kind of difficult to... Okay, apparently something went on in the game, oddly enough, so we'll have to come back to that pretty soon. What the heck? Anyway, so... Sab... Sab and Yorga are... well, Sab I know is a fairly powerful player. He was in the 1v1 tournament, did okay. He is a top 10 player, so that's saying something. And Randy and Silencer are both quite powerful, and, okay, the game had started, apparently I just desynced. So let us actually begin this properly. So, Randy and Silencer in the southeast corner of the map, Randy going for heavy tanks, Silencer going for light vehicles, is on Titan Duel, by the way, so a vehicle heavy style of play is going to happen. That's just how it goes, we... You get a lot of vehicles because this is a flat map. It's a large flat map that supports vehicles quite nicely. And Silencer is... Silencer has to deal with both Sab and Yurga's Scorcher at the moment, but... Or Scorcher and Kodachi, both, I should say, Sab and Yurga also going for Light Vehicle Heavy Tank, respectively. And Sab is actually... Let's say he's quite a bit more focused on defense than Silencer and Randy are. I mean, Silencer has no turrets whatsoever. Randy does have a defender just kind of out there. Basically, it's early warning system at this point. While... Yurga, Yurga and Sab are both getting quite a bit more defenses, but not that much. It's not shouldn't be that big of a deal. It's just going to be that much harder for Randy and Silencer to get in. However, Randy doing a lot of expansion to the south with his commander, while Sab doing the same sort of thing with a worker, and the center of the map becoming a bit of a war zone, but really it's just opening shots. Nothing huge at this point. However, there's going to be an interception. Trying to intercept this panther with darts and a scorcher. Is that going to work? I think so. Yes, it will. The panther goes to the darts first and ends up dying to the scorcher from Sab. Or Sob. I guess we Sob, actually. From Sob. And... Yurga getting his expansion going and getting in the center of the map, trying to bring his own panthers to bear. Not doing too badly either, so right now Saab and Yurga are well, keeping their side of the map, and Randy and Silencer are maintaining theirs as well. Both player both teams are trying to avoid getting a lot of and trying to prevent the other players from getting a lot of ground and are succeeding at it. So back at base, looks like Scorchers and Panthers are all that's coming up from Randy and Silencer, while same thing from Yurga and Saab. Well, See. Well, Saab actually, Saab doing a really nice harassment job in the south side of the map. Getting rid of Silencer's workers. I think he's going to get rid of both of them. Yes, he will. Managing to dive in with both of his Scorchers to get rid of both of those Masons. Losing the Scorchers in the process, but a very powerful raid that was. I mean, Silencer right now, he is going to have that much of a harder time. Actually, right now, Saab and Yurga are a little bit ahead in terms of economy. Yurga's the farthest ahead in terms of military. He's been... Stockpiling a bunch of Panthers. Hasn't really gotten into a whole lot of fights. I mean, Saab did lose a few Scorchers there, but it's really a matter of how it's going to work out in the later game. Right now, neither player is going to be all that concerned about what's going on, but they will be pretty soon, especially as Silencer is coming in with a nice Scorcher dive, getting into the center of the map, starting to get rid of what's going on. Everything that Saab, well, Saab was building up in the center of the map, that's, well, that's been damaged. I mean... What he had in the right side of the map has been completely destroyed, and there was an attempt on the west side of the map to harass that. Southwest side is still safe. However, Randy is not quite able to get to the northeast side as easily. Yurga is in the way, blocking that off, making sure that doesn't happen. And Silencer, on the other hand, is totally aware of what Saab is up to, and is sending in a Scorcher to deal with it. 
I think one Scorcher is not going to be enough, though. This laser turret will probably do it in. But we will see fairly soon. And battle here in the center of the map, or northeast corner of the map. Yorga is starting, well, starting to go down, but it's, no, it's definitely Yorga's battle to lose right now. Silencer is taking this. He is starting to creep in and take some territory. Yorga is still ahead in terms of overall military advantage, but he's not quite... He's not quite positioned properly to deal with this battle, and his commander, while helping out, I mean, both of them have upgrade commanders. Both of them have beam laser... E oh, sorry. No, Randy does not have any weapon on his commander. Just the E-cell. No beam laser, just E-cell, so that's going to be... Well, that's not going to help out the fight. Admittedly, the Panther, the Panthers, more of them are in position than exist for Yurga. A southwest corner of the map, Silencer and Saab are going at it. They are... Well, actually, establishing, they're establishing a no-man's land at this point. Silencer is getting into Saab's expansion here, and Saab is going to lose his expansion. Actually, well, he's going to lose some of the laser turrets. I think the whole expansion is in jeopardy, but actually, no! The Scorcher's not quite able to get around in time to deal with the laser turrets. There's no point trying at this point. They should fall back and repair if they're going to do anything. Got caught up in this tiny little ditch here. And at the same time, northeast corner of the map, we have... Randy trying to attack with late with lotuses. A few panthers, but mostly just have a lotus in good position. And at the same time, Salab is going to the southwest corner of the map, but he's going to lose his attack. Silencer does have enough scorches in position. Silencer and Randy have been really good at maintaining a good position on the map. And at this point, we see that well, Silencer was starting to overdrive, but really just focus more on getting vehicles, getting some slashers up now. Changing up a bit just to get himself a bit more forward defense. I mean, slashes are basically like moving defenders. Of course, the problem is that they still have to remain stationary in order to fire, but as long as you deal with that, it's not a big deal. As long as you have something to support them, and these Scorchers should be able to do so. Now, Saab, on the other hand, he is going... He is doing an air switch, and also switching to levelers. So, we have levelers and now Reapers coming in, so Yurga and Saab are teching up. Well, as it were, they're going to more expensive units. They're going to more expensive units. That's about the closest thing that Zero K has to a tech system. While Silencer is, well, other than the Make couple the slashers, and, okay, I Making... apologize. I thought I turned off text to speech, but apparently yeah, I had not. And I don't actually know how offhand. Unfortunately, I don't remember how. Ah. Seriously, this is just annoying. Not the time to fiddle with text to speech settings. Oh, forget it. Anyway, I just have to deal with that for now. So, anyway, what was I? Oh, yes. Silence are coming from the southwest, trying to... Well, actually, using the using the slashes to good effect. The lances are coming in range, and at the same time, Randy is pushing forward, trying to get rid of Yurga's Panthers, and doing a good job of it, too. However, Yurga's Panthers exploded just the right time to be able to provide a bit of an opening. I mean, Panthers, when they explode, have basically a tick blast. But not quite enough... Randy is able to retreat, and Yurga is behind, and actually, fair bit behind in military now. 3,400 metal into military compared to Randy's 4,100 metal. That's probably an extra panther, that's probably an extra two panthers for Randy, and... Same time, Silencer is, once, well, he's setting up slashers. For, essentially, like I said, a creeping defense idea. But not much else, he is focused very heavily on just pumping out as many Scorchers as he can, while Saab does have bombers, he does have some shadows up. And he's, like I said, focusing... Well, not focusing on Ravagers. A bit curious where that Reaper went off to. I mean, the thing is with Reapers against Panthers is that... Well, actually, okay, I can't easily say a whole lot because Panthers have been changed a lot in the last month, but... Last I checked, Reapers versus Panthers does not go for the Reaper. The Panthers will just be able to surround it and stun lock it. So, Yurga's gonna need a lot more support on that. He's gonna need more Panthers of his own just to support that. And he is getting a Stinger as well, which is going to be interesting. I think he's gonna he's not gonna get it in time though. I mean if he gets it in time, that's definitely gonna be a trump card for him, but I don't think he's gonna get it in time. Randy coming in with Well, splitting up his forces, just trying to attack on all fronts, figuring that the defenses are gonna be weak around everywhere, and he looks like he's probably right. Getting in here, getting rid of all the defenses at the well, eastern front, and Yurga's commander going down as well. Everything here going down. Yurga basically having his front broken and so, and, well, sorry, Randy's able to get in. Sub is not coming into support yet. I'm a bit curious where Sub is right now. He is in the southwest corner. He's dealing with Silencer coming in as well. Randy and Silencer are attacking in simultaneously. 
Zob coming in with his shadow trying to deal with Randy's commander. That's not really going to help him much. The Reaper is still going to go down from the looks of it. But the commander of Randy has died. Randy has lost his commander, and Yurga has also lost his commander. As for Saab and Silencer, it's hard to say, but I think at this point Silencer is going to rush in with a couple dozen Scorchers. And it doesn't look like Saab has really anything to deal with it. He has no Shadows. He has... Sorry, I mean, he has no Phoenixes. He has Levelers, but... I'm not sure exactly how effective that will be against Scorchers. If he has a lot of them, it'll work, but I don't know. If, I don't think he has enough. However, the levels are doing what they can against the Panthers, and it's... I mean, Randy's Panthers are taking a fair amount of damage. They are going down pretty quickly. And actually... There we go. Randy has lost all of his Panthers in that attack, but more are forthcoming for sure. And yes, there are definitely more forthcoming. And... Looks like Silencer has actually also gone for an air switch of his own. So both Silencer and Sob were thinking the same thing, going for an air switch. But that's really not going to matter too much. I think Silencer and Randy have this game. A little bit to say, though, Randy's actually, he lost a lot of military in that attack. A lot of his Panthers got, were killed. Kind of riding on Silencer's military, but Silencer is doing a fair amount of harassment. And Sob managed to successfully defend, losing a bit of power income, but not all that much. Still, Saab is... Saab's air units are really the only thing keeping him in the game right now. As it stands, Randy and Silencer do have... Well, actually, no, maybe not. No, in fact, Saab... Not just his air units, his ground units as well. He did... Since he did switch up, I mean, he's... Does now have enough levelers that he should be able to get rid of the Scorchers without too much issue. I mean, a couple levelers would have been a problem, but... Now, it's going to be leveler and Ravager versus pure Ravager, and I think that... Well, Leveler, Leveler Ravager is going to win, if nothing, if for nothing else than simply the sheer numbers. But Silencer is definitely switching up his tech. He is not, well, a little bit. He's building a few Ravagers here and there, but still focusing very heavily on Scorchers, and I think the, land, the Levelers are going to punish that. But what is, for uh, likely certain, is... What is likely to be for certain is that Saab is certainly giving... Yuri got some time to rebuild. Get himself back in the game, regroup a bit. I mean, Randy is a terrifying presence nonetheless on this northeastern front, but in the southwest, Saab is managing to deal a lot of damage. Keeping these levelers around, harassing, breaking through that front as well. And the front's been pretty thoroughly broken on both sides. And it looks like Silencer is not even worried about rebuilding that front. Randy's front is still in pretty good shape, but it's Kind of hard to say right now. It looks like... Well, it looks like Saab still has a bit of an advantage. He does need to worry about his airiness, though. The, the Avengers here are taking out his shadows, and that's going to be a big deal. He does have a couple of bands of his own to try to deal with that, but he's lost two shadows already. And actually, that's most of his military advantage in terms of metal. And Saab actually starting to lose out his levelers as well. The, the slashers are dealing with them. No Scorches in here to support them from the looks of it. And... There are some Scorches forthcoming, but Saab does not have them yet. And the problem is that Levelers don't deal especially well with Slashers. Scorchers do, but Levelers don't. And at this point, it looks like Ravagers spam from Silencer. He's switching out entirely to Ravagers, and Randy's still stuck with Panthers. He's not bothering to move up to anything else. And that holds true for Yurga as well. Both players... Very much taking advantage of the Panthers EMP, not wanting to go to anything else. Not wanting to go to Reapers or to... You can put down... Well, cut out, I'm not surprised, but Reapers, Banishers, Pillagers, no, none of that. They're sticking to Panthers, and that seems to be working okay. However, Levelers are the southwest corner of the map, and they are doing a... Well, doing a fine job. The thing with Levelers is that the projectile is quite quick, so pretty much impossible to dodge. Ravagers, on the other hand, have a slow-moving projectile, which can be pretty easily dodged, as you can see... The levelers are doing just fine with that, and Saab was able to micro them out of there, dodge the attacks, and basically avoid losing them to this Ravager. Unfortunately, this leveler did stop, did engage, but Saab is taking that, selecting it, and moving it out of the way. Silencer, on the other hand, starting to get more vamps, trying to just get air control for himself. Basically, vamp fight. Whoever can win that, but Saab does have an advantage just to have... He started earlier, that's the big thing. He does the advantage of being here first. 
Unfortunately, his vehicles are suffering a bit from, well, suffering a bit from Randy and Silence's attacks. Not able to get through. It looks like the levelers are still alive and doing fine, but a bunch of Scorchers... Those Scorchers really didn't need to die like that. That was... That seems like it was a bit of a mistake there. However, Yurga is managing to break through Randy's front, and Randy actually did expand over to the northeast as well. So, right now, Randy is Randy and Silence are actually even with Saab and Yurga, just about. Looks like Reclaim is making up the difference, as it does in this stage of the game, of course. Saab at the southwest corner of the map, reclaiming a bunch there. Not sure where Randy and Silence are reclaiming. I think they might not be, in fact. Not right now, anyway. They were probably in the center of the map reclaiming, but right now I think Saab is the only one who's actually doing a whole lot of reclaim. Yurga, on the other hand, needs to do more reclaim. He doesn't have a lot of metal extractors. They were heavily destroyed in this attack, but he is trying to just take advantage of... basically... Randy being somewhat open, and unfortunately Randy's not that open, but at the same time, Randy and Silencer are not together, which means that Saab and Yurga... Well, okay, Saab and Yurga aren't together either, but it's not going to hurt them as much as it would otherwise. But Randy... Randy moving in, but he's got a numerical disadvantage. It's going to come down to position now if Yurga gets in this fight. The southwest corner of the map, Saab is getting rid of Silencer's attack. Silencer's Ravager not able to survive, and... Those Scorchers able to get through. Panthers... Here it comes, and they are actually dealing a fair amount of damage. Unfortunately, a bunch of them got EMP. Well, got some EMP damage. Only one of them got fully EMP'd by that Panther explosion. And Saab getting rid of one of the vamps. Not quite able to get rid of the other before the bombers... No, that shadow is possibly going to go down, but it looks like... No, that vamp gets killed instead. So the shadow being healed is on the air pad, mind you. So it was going to get healed as it was getting attacked. And a nice raid here by Saab, getting rid of some metal extractors, getting, well, closing some power plants, but unfortunately, that Scorch needs to move. There it goes. It needs to move out of the way, because that was going to get hit by the Ravager if it hadn't moved. Get behind the cover of the power plants. I mean, it's not a bad way of setting up power plants to make it difficult to attack, but the problem is, of course, that also means that it can be easy to raid within. Slight air battle going into the southwest, but this is the big thing. Nice, this boy. raid here, I think, is going to be able to just get rid of, well, pretty much everything. In fact, I think that that's... Wow, I think Saab might have been able to just win the game out right here. This is... Okay, that was... I think Saab just got MVP in this game right now. That was... That was an amazing raid. Got rid of Caretaker on this vehicle factory, so stopping the build power. Got rid of five or so metal extractors. Definitely holding back the economy. At the same time, Randy is attacking in the northwest. Sorry, northeast. Well, actually, towards the northwest. And... Not working out for him, running out of numerical advantage, and losing all of his Panthers, or nearly all of his Panthers. The rest, a couple of them are able to retreat, but even then, getting caught up by Scorchers. Not caught up enough for them, though. It's, they are going to survive that. That's not going to be the biggest deal. And Silencer, his production has been reduced slightly. He does have another character. He does have his, his commander. But even then, he only has 25 metal. He doesn't have a whole lot of metal to push in here. In fact, looks like between the commander and... Yeah, I would say it probably only about six or so metal per second is going into that factory right now. And Saab, on the other hand, has has gotten a lot of reclaim and has been pretty much able to have not quite full production, but quite a lot of it. 40 metal, or, well, 40 metal with reclaim, 20 metal without, but still, he has been reclaiming pretty consistently this entire game. And there goes more reclaim for him, so Saab just using that reclaim exactly the way it's meant to be used. And I think this is going to be the killing blow. Saab running in with five levelers. That's going to... That's likely to deal with everything. Yurga, at the same time, the north, does have a banisher. It's... Well, it's doing something. It is it is dealing damage. Can't fault him for that. But looks like... Okay, yes. Randy and Silencer have thrown in the towel. That is game one. So we will have game two as soon as it starts up. That was a pretty... That was a fascinating game there, so... Wow, I'm... I gotta say, I am impressed. Nicely done, Saab. I mean, it really, it looked like Silencer and Randy were gonna win there, especially during the No Man's Land segment, but... Oh, Saab pulled through. And Yurga stayed alive as well, and... That's very interesting. I am excited to see what happens in Game 2, so stay tuned for that, and it'll be starting up in just a minute or two. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to game two of Yurga and Saab versus Randy and Silencer in the one-day 2v2 tournament. So that's actually one of the seed matches, but 
it's it seemed like one of the better matches to start off with because it was likely to be a good series. And so far, game one, holy crap, that was an awesome game. I mean, just especially Saab going in the back with that harassment, that was amazing. But overall, well done. So we are on to game two here. It's going to be on Blue Bend. And that will, well, that will happen, I guess. I mean, Blue Bend, I just might as well go over it while the players are prepping up a bit. So Blue Bend is not a map I've ever seen cast. I've never casted. I've never cast this map. It is mostly clearly a team map. Just judging by the number of metal pro extractors, although I could see it turning into one v one map without too much issue. But anyway, it's as you can see got a bend to it. Actually, I kind of like. I really like this design. Honestly, it's pretty neat. Admittedly, it does mean you can easily get close or far depending on how you set yourself up. But it's definitely not a design you see a whole lot in zero K maps. But it's interesting. I I look forward to seeing how it's going to play out. My guess, as you can see, Randy is starting out near, Saab is starting out near, so there's going to be a lot of conflict between Randy and Saab early on, and then Yurga and... Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if Yurga and Silencer both played air. No, Yurga's going for vehicles, Randy's going for tanks, Saab going for vehicles, and hovercrafts from Yurga. Interesting. Not sure why hovercrafts, but that's not a bad choice. Let's actually double-check something. Because there is, as you can see, an island, or rather, yeah, an island sort of to the southeast. I think he might be trying to take that. Let's just double check something. Can he do so? And it looks like it would be close. It looks like there might be a path, but there are a lot of spots that are going to be hard to path through. So I don't know if it's really going to be a path through to this base using hovercrafts. I think he's going to have to use air in order to do that. So you're starting out just a couple scouting, a couple scouting scrubbers and silencer going off with early builders. Given the size of this map, I would say neither player is going to be focusing too much on too early rushing. I mean, obviously raiding and rushing is a key part of 0k, that's just how the game works. But I think that the players are going to be a little bit more focused on building up a bit, just given how big this map is, how much metal this map has. I mean, look at all the metal patches here. That's, that's pretty big. So I think that we're going to be seeing going to be seeing a fair bit more focus on early economic expansion then we are going to be seeing a lot of focus on early raiding and harassment mind you this one dart did for free get a max it's still alive too got a max and scorches will be coming in afterwards it looks like yurga i mean sob is deciding you know what he's going to go for it he's just going to go for it deal some damage and work for there and okay sprying is confirming that this area is not hover passable unless you do some terraforming shenanigans to it first which makes perfect sense. But yeah, if you smooth this out, I'd imagine it would become hovercraft passable. It's just it's just these little bumps, these little small chunks of rock, basically, that are getting in the way. But if it was smooth, it'd be fine. And that being said, well, it's not actually... I mean, it's five metal. Five metal is not terribly bad, though admittedly on a map like this, so much metal is already accessible on the land, it's not the biggest deal. The Northwest is going to be interesting, but I think that players aren't going to go for that until air is available anyway. And Yurga is having to deal with some harassment from... Sorry, Yurga is harassing Silencer, but he doesn't have to deal with anything. He's... Silencer able to get rid of that without too much issue. This is... I was a little bit curious why Yurga is going for hovercrafts. It's an interesting choice. I... I mean, it does have a huge amount of alpha damage. Scrubbers, are at least... Their first hit is huge. So I could see that. It's just the follow-up pits that's sort of the problem. At the same time, Saab is coming in for some harassment with some Scorchers, and I mean, really, Yurga and Saab are likely to be very confident. They did win game one. I mean, this is this is after they won game one, and I think they're just going to go for it, try to clean up with game two as quickly as possible. While Silencer and Randy need to win this game in order to stay in the tournament, and if they do, well, then we're on to game three. If they don't, however, then we're on to the next series, whatever that happens to be. I have no idea what is going on. There are other series being played at the same time. I hope there are other people casting it. I don't know if Crazy Eddie was planning on casting this at all, so I have no idea if he's going to do that. He did some for 1v1 tournament. I don't know if he's going to do any for this tournament. Anyway, Silencer and Yurga scrumming out in the north, or in the west side of the map. Not north anyway. <laughs> not north anymore. Not This is bigger than Titan Duel. That would have been Northwestern Titan Duel given the size, but not here. Looks like Yurga is able to get out of that. I mean, neither player taking a huge amount of damage. Yurga did lose a couple scrubbers. And at the same time, Randy... Is, wow, Saab is being extremely forward with these defenses. I mean, a couple forward defender and a forward Lotus at 
four minutes into the game, he is... He is just going all out aggressive. I mean, at the same time, he is actually building a fairly strong economy, but he is going very aggressive while he does this. And Randy and Silencer actually have a slightly stronger economy. Saab is really behind in terms of energy, by the way. He is just now getting some power plants, but otherwise very much behind in energy. And Silencer getting rid of Yurga's Scrubbers. Not much that they can do about this. Oh, I was about to say, almost got in a good position to get rid of both of these... Well, both these Scorchers, but the thing is, not able to do so. Scrubbers fire through units, so that's definitely thing to consider, but it's rather difficult to micro around. Really have to be we have to keep your eye on how that works in order to properly micro around it. Possibly the best way to do that would actually be to put them on hold fire. Like just to say hold fire, don't attack, and then attack when you tell them to. So that they attack right when in the perfect position. But anyway, looks like they are gonna actually get lucky in this case though, or at least a couple of them are gonna get lucky with these Panthers. However, most of them are not! Most of them are in fact going to die. Horrible to Horrible lightning-induced deaths. Burning and shorting out of electronics. Well, as you can see, shorting out of electronics, of course, happens first. But after that, the burning death. Because that's what Panthers do. They make you die in a... Well, they make you die in a lightning storm. Not quite a fire. That's Kodachi's dub. Kodachi's dub makes you die... Kodachi is the one that makes you die in a fire. But neither player is building Kodachi... Oh, should you, well, I should say Randy's dealing with tanks, so he can't... He's not building Kodachi's. Yurga also not building Kodachi's. Actually, Yurga can't build Kodachi's, obviously. He's building Hovercrafts. He has no heavy tank factory. But he is focusing heavily on Scorchers... Sorry, Scrubbers, and they are not doing all that much. He is getting Maces, however, and I was about to say, Maces would be a very good idea against the Scorchers. Well, a pretty good idea against the Scorchers. It, it's going to come down to whether or not they can be caught. And at the same time, Randy doing a, a ton of damage to Saab's expansion to the east. And I think Saab may have overextended a bit. He is coming in to defend himself. Sending in some units to try to deal with this, but even then, I don't know how much it's going to help. The levelers are doing pretty... Or this leveler here is doing a pretty good job, but... The panther's out of range. The panther's faster. The leveler cannot catch up. And a fusion plant being built, but... Defended... No, not quite defended well enough by the commander, but the defender from Yurga finishes it off. Yurga's commander didn't quite do it, but the defender certainly did. However, silence are coming in with the Scorchers, and check his base. Silence are just pushing all of his metal into Scorchers. 25 metal, pushing it all into Scorchers. Or... It can't be all in the Scorchers. He's got to have builders somewhere. But anyway, he's pushing, pushing almost all of the Scorchers to pretty good effect. Leveler's coming in from Yurga... Sorry, from Saab. Definitely not Yurga, obviously. He's Hovercrafts. The Maces are coming in from Yurga, but Saab coming in with the Levelers and doing a really good job getting rid of these Scorchers, chasing them right off. Not able to deal enough damage. Need to get out of the way because the Levelers will just tear them to shreds. And Defender nicely gets rid of a Scorcher on its way back home. And that being said, Randy's still able to get rid of Sub's expansion. Sub's economy is basically tanking at this point. I mean, he's got so many forward metal extractors. He's got this metal extractor. He has the metal extractors that were over here. He... Everything he has is quite forward. Yurga is in the back. Yurga has the ability to just take this whole section up north and live with that. Now, I'm pretty sure that metal is actually shared between players, but still... Saab and Yurga are well behind Randy and Silencer. I mean, Randy and Silencer have... Well, they have some overdrive. These are... These are two metal spots, overdrive to three metal. And... Or overdriven to three metal. There's Reclaim as well that Silencer is taking. And I'm pretty sure Randy is probably taking it as well. Or... No, actually, I don't see him taking any Reclaim on the map. But, doesn't matter. Saab and Yurga realize they don't really have much... No! Saab and Yurga disagreeing on this one. They don't know if they want to resign. Not sure who's... I think Saab is probably proposing to resign. Yurga thinks he still has a chance. And Yurga... Actually is... Well... It's going to be really tough. They are economically behind quite a lot. Some good reclaims, some good kills would actually turn that around a bit. But they pretty much have to... Yeah. Yurga is definitely the one going for no. They would have to make sure that they are... Really solid wins. I mean, if Yurga can get a few wins here and reclaim himself back into position while taking over the north... I think he has a chance, but he's not even trying to take over the north. And unfortunately, his battles have not been going in his favor, losing a lot of Scrubbers to these Scorchers. Now, bear in mind, Scrubbers are... Scrubbers are about two-thirds the cost of Scorchers, but still, he is not killing two Scorchers for every three Scrubbers he loses. So it's not really working out at this point. He is... I mean, he'd need to kite with those Scrubbers, and he's... It's not working out. This really is not working out. I think that Saab and Yurga... Well, they are not going to resign at this point. But I can see why Saab would like to. 
In fact, Saab has just left. Jurgen now has control over everything. Saab has individually surrendered. Okay. You can do that. It does switch over control of everything to your ally, but I think Yurga, not sure if he's going to be able to deal with this. He has half of the economy of Randy and Silencer. Is the same economy as each of them. And Yurga decides to surrender as well. That is game. So we are going on to game three. Though admittedly, that game was a little less exciting than game one, unfortunately. But yes, we're going into game three. And that will hopefully be a more exciting matchup than game two was. I mean, game two is interesting, but it... Yeah, Saab and Yurga really were too aggressive, but they had the opportunity to do that. So we'll be back in just a couple minutes, and go. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another, well, to Game 3 of Saab, Yurga versus Randy and Silencer in the One Day 2v2 tournament. We, actually, while we're doing this, Anarchy and the Sponge won their game versus Smirk, Scotty, and Aethon. To go fight Magman and Mothmaster, or Mothmaster, while Saab and Yurga, Silence and Randy are going to actually be fighting whoever wins in that series. Right now, I believe that there's also the Killer Rylahop and Ivory King Vistritium, or Vistritium game going on at the same time. It's kind of hard to read. Okay, Vistritium game. I believe that's also going on at the same time, but the results have not come in from that. And we're going to be playing Game 3 now for Saab, Yurga versus Randy and Silencer, and that is going to be between... Well, that's going to be on Ravaged, which is, as I mentioned before, one of my favorite maps. Not, I mean, my favorite map is probably still Trojan Hills, but Ravaged I really quite like. Oh, whoops, I got... Apparently got desynced again. Hold on a sec. Anyway, yeah, Ravaged is one of my favorite maps. It's definitely more of a StarCraft-y map, but... That's, as I mentioned before, kind of what I'm used to. So I do quite like it. But I also like Trojan Hills, because Trojan Hills has a very nice design to it. Okay. Game did start, and we are now going. Sub, going for air very early on. You're going for Cloaky Bots. And at the same time, we have Randy and Silencer going for air and... Air and Bill vehicles. Expand middle. I'll turn that off. Anyway... So, air and vehicles are, well, not a bad choice. I mean, air, I'm not surprised in this map. Given how it's difficult to actually get into this choke point, I'm not surprised that they are attacking air, or going for air early on. I am also not surprised that spiders aren't being used. They are commonly used in 1v1 in this map, but in a 2v2 situation, it seems unlikely to work. And a shadow coming in within a minute, getting rid of, of a defender. That's, that's going to be fairly powerful. But that's also going to be... A well, it's also going to be chased back. Shadow coming in from Saab as well to try to deal some damage. But Randy's already prepared for that with the Avenger. Now, whether the Shadow's actually going to kill anything, we'll see. Probably just going to go for a Metal Extractor, but nope, going for the factory itself, trying to get that Shadow and not dealing a whole lot of damage to the factory before it itself goes down into the water. And a bunch of Glaives as well coming in from Yurga. Now, this is going to be a lot more effective, but still, these Glaives coming in. I think they're going to be able to deal with the Scorcher just fine if they go in. More Glaives are coming, but Yurik has actually run out of metal. He needs to... Well, he is expanding. He needs to get more metal extractors up. Given that this is a smaller map, it is going to get very cramped very quickly. And Saab is setting himself up as well for anti-air. Trying to retake the air, trying to make sure that he actually has the ability to get rid of Yurik's forces. I'm curious to see when we're going to start seeing an rearm repair pad from either player, probably once they get about a half a dozen to a dozen bombers. Assuming that does happen. Though, man that being said, neither player has actually gotten to that point. They've managed to deal with not worrying about the re rearm repair pads. Granted, once you get enough bombers, it really is something you have to worry about, but I think at this point it's not going to be the biggest deal. And Saab, fairly aware of what's going on. Both players are actually establishing a front very early on. Saab and Yurga on par with Randy and Silencer, but Randy is about to get rid of a Metal Extractor. There it goes. He's going to lose that Bomber in the process, but still able to get rid of a Metal Extractor. Not the most even trade. One Bomber for a Metal Extractor that probably could have gone better. And we have a dozen Glaives as well for Yurga. He's trying to get around, trying to help deal with these Avengers. But they are, well, not helping. They're not going to be able to shoot far enough to be able to do so. 
However, they are going to be able to help with the Scorchers to an extent, but I think at this point there are enough Scorchers that's going to be a bit of a problem. And a couple of Zeus and a Jethro coming in in this build order for Yurga. Saab, on the other hand, Saab is still focusing entirely on almost entirely on Avengers. Getting a crane, getting a scout plane. Oh, Vulture. Get those. The scout plane. But I, I thought I turned off map marks. Ah. There we go. Okay. I meant to turn that off. Anyway. Silencer is... Well, actually, Randy's getting attacked by the Glaives in the north and getting quite a lot of damage. He does... Well, not quite all that much damage. He hadn't quite fully built it up. His commander under quite a lot of attack, but I think the Glaives... No, they're going to be able to take care of it, I think. If they focus on that commander... And it's going to go down. Randy loses his commander. And that commander, by the way, had an energy cell. So Randy has... He has completely energy stalled. He had no power plants. There was, these were his only power plants that were being built. So Randy is... Out of energy at this point. He pretty much can't build All anything. Very, cute. very slowly. Okay, I'm just gonna turn that bloody thing off. I don't know how to turn text to speech off offhand, but I do know that I can turn off points and labels. That doesn't pop up. Anyway, Saab is. Well, Saab's in a slightly better position. He does have a light particle beam. He does have, I think, energy cells. Well, yes, he does, but he's still able to get rid of these scorchers and in a nice defensive position as well, so. His commander is doing fine. Yurga's commander is... Where is Yurga's commander? Ah, here he is, over to the south, expanding on his own, and getting bombed out! A couple more shots, and that's... Actually, that is a level zero commander, so Yurga is not dependent on his commander at all. I mean, for build power, yes, but not for energy. He has a bunch of wind generators. He has nothing else, actually. Oh, no, he has more wind generators down here. But that's... He has power. He does not need the energy cell. Randy's starting to rebuild his power infrastructure, but that was pretty big. Getting more Low solar plants. Energy. Presumably BC energy cell calm died. I really gotta turn up Texas Beach. Oh. Thank you. Settings audio text to speech. Thank you. I I forgot how to set that. It was a year ago that I set up all my settings. Anyway. That is well, that Sob's commander gonna go down, actually. I think it's gonna come down to whether or not the bomber does it. No, it doesn't. The bomber misses on the first pass. Randy does not take out Sob's commander. And Sob actually does have an energy infrastructure independent of his commander, but not all that much. It is definitely a bigger deal if he loses his E cell. He also has a Lazarus device. He's gonna start probably resurrecting some units pretty soon. We'll see, though. What the? Did he just start going for an. I think he started going for a disco rave party. That must have been a misclick. Yeah, he must have gone... He must have hit V before hitting... Or which one's Disco Ray Party? D. Compared to C... And that's still Chainsaw. I don't know what he was trying to do. Because that C... I, unless he's using Gesture Menu, and that's... Not something I have loaded at the moment. But it looks like... Saab... Gonna double check the east side of the map here. See what's going on. And Yurga, on the other hand... Does have a nice little harassment force set up here in the northeast. And... Saab trying to break that. It looks like Yurk is going to take... No, he's not going to take advantage of it quite yet. He is moving in a position to probably take advantage of the disruption. But he's going to be moving uphill if he does so. And no, he's going to go for it. He doesn't... Or, well, he's going to try to bait Silencer in from the looks of it. Not going to try to fight that uphill battle. He's going to try to bait Silencer. And from there, get rid of that Defender, which is going to be quite useful for the Glaives. Defender's anti-air, but also pretty much anti-Glaive. And at the same time, Jethro's are set up in a nice position to deal with what's going on. Now, Silencer has built himself a nice base in the center of the map. A lot of energy, a fair amount of metal, quite a bit of overdrive, actually. Well, okay, not all that much overdrive. Doesn't have enough excess right now to overdrive, but he will pretty soon. And a fair amount of reclaim. So Silencer is in a relatively safe position, but Randy has just now rebuilt his economy, pretty much. And this entire time, of course, Yurga and Saab have been rebuilding, and Randy's way behind in terms of military as well. I mean, he has... 500 metal worth of military. That's basically just... Just these Avengers, pretty much. And now they are down. I think at this point he's... Really, he's still trying to rebuild. I mean, Silencer is in a good position to protect him, to keep him in the game, but... At the same time, Saab and Yurga have enough resources, enough military. They should just be able to steamroll both Randy and Silencer at this point. I think that'll be game and match. I mean, if it is a win, of course, it will be match, and... Silencer... Looks like he's, he's going to lose his commander, too. The Glaives need to get in position to do this, and it looks like once they do that, it'll... Well, 
Yeah, there's pointing out, so, or Yoga's pointing out there in the lead of her economy. And the commander has gone down. I kind of wish I just ignored that map mark, but commander has gone down. Silencer has lost his commander, as has Randy, although Silencer did not need his commander anywhere near as much as Randy did. It was pure E cell as well, so not a whole lot of investment in there. Now, Saab morphing once again, and I'm a bit surprised. Okay, there's a Lazarus device being used. He does have four Scorchers up and a Slasher. All of them were previously Silencers, but now they belong to Saab. Although, admittedly, now they're. <laughs> soon after, they're going to die, but still. They are belonging to Saab, which is something. Just keep. Just buying some time and getting rid of. Wow, very effectively getting rid of Silencer's forces as well. Really nice position. At the same time, Yurga coming in with this glaze to the center of the map, and I think that is going to be pretty much game. Yurga expanding as well to the south, making sure just to keep their economic lead going. Randy, on the other hand, trying to get a Cloakybot factory, getting away from air, trying to just fight on the ground effectively, but even with that, I don't know how much of a chance he has. Right now, Silencer is expanding to the north as well, but Silencer has lost his expansion to the south here, and more resurrection going on. Scorch is being resurrected by Sob's commander, and why not? Get your opponent's units to work for you. I mean, Sob has enough energy. Well, actually, Sob's running out of energy. That's the thing. Resurrection mostly takes energy. It takes metal if it has to, but it always takes energy. Sob is going to need to have more power plants in order to really make this work on the long term. Because he is out of energy, and he's, well, not benefiting from that. He does have these wind generators, but they aren't spinning as quickly as I'm sure he would like. Still... He is able to keep Silencer on his toes, because Silencer really can't deal with this too easily. That being said, Saab might want to reclaim if... Well, actually, this is just metal. He doesn't need to reclaim these. In fact, he's accessing metal at the moment. What is he building? He's... Oh, getting a Caretaker. That's good. He does need that in order to use that metal up. But admittedly, he's also out of energy, so it's not going to help that much. He needs to get... What he needs to get is... Yeah, he's using a lot of energy to do this. How much build power does he have? He has... Okay, he's got, I think, 20 build power. No, 25 build power. Yeah, he needs more energy. He needs a lot more energy. And it looks like he's finally getting that, too. Getting power plants. Well, see, these power plants here look like they have started to... Yep, they have started to pick up the pace. They are all working at 2.2. And at the same time, Yurga moving in with his cloakies. Trying to get rid of Randy's factory. Not going to be able to do so in one pass, but still able to deal a fair amount of damage. That being said, that's damage inside Randy's base. Randy can reclaim this and probably will. He has a caretaker right there. He can and should reclaim this. He needs it for his metal. This isn't the build power for it, but at the same time, Saab coming in with Silencer's old Scorchers getting... This will get rid of the Pokemon factory without issue. And at the same time, Saab... Yeah, he is way out of energy. Cloaking Field and Resurrection. That is not going to work out too well. But the caretaker has gone down. These Scorchers are going to get rid of the Metal Extractor and... Randy and Silencer have thrown in the towel. That is game. That is match. Well done, Saab and Yurga, for winning. Wow, it's actually a bit of a surprise, too, given that Randy is... Well, Randy especially is a very powerful player. He came into the 1v1 tournament, and, or after the 1v1 tournament, and he's been doing really well for himself. Silencer, I'm not sure of his history so much, but he's also a power, he, fairly powerful player. But as it stands, Saab and Yurga just managed to work together that much better. So well done to... Well done to Saab and Yurga. They'll be back in a few minutes once I figure out what the next match is going to actually be. And then once that happens, I will have that match for you. So stay tuned, everyone, and I'll be back in just a minute. Let's double check if I think the, I think the results have been updated. And yes, they have. And actually, just for an extra bit of update, we have... At the same time, Firenab and Failer beat, or were lost to Banana Eye and Banana King. And as you can see, Saab and Yurga against Silencer and Randy. Saab, Yurga won. Where I'm going to hopefully be able to catch Magman, Mothmaster versus Anarchid in the Sponge. I don't know if that started yet. I think it probably has. And let's see it. Has it yet started? I have no idea. It might be on a game two. I'll just double check. And I'll be back once I figure out what match to cast. Oh, they actually have started. Okay, they have started. It looks like... I'm not sure what game this is. But, yeah, there aren't a whole lot of options for matches to cast in the moment. 
So anyway, I'll be back shortly once I figure out what I'm going to be casting next of this tournament. So stay tuned.